in the aerial battleground of World War II. One aircraft was destined to become the quintessential dogfighter of its era. The P-51 Mustang, a stunning combination of speed, combat range, and firepower. Now, you're in the cockpit as Mustang pilots duel to the death with the best Axis fighters in Europe and the Pacific. ME-109s, Zeros, even German jets. Cementing the Mustang's place as the most famous American warbird in history. Experience the battle. Dissect the tactics. Relive the dogfights of the P-51 Mustang. November 2nd, 1944. 16 P-51 Mustangs of the 352nd Fighter Group, the blue-nosed bastards of Bodney, drive deep into the heart of enemy territory. Captain Donald S. Bryan leads eight of the Mustangs, on course to link up with B-17s and herd them to a Nazi oil refinery in Meersburg, Germany. We were going into escort. Uh, we were on a penetration, and we had not actually picked up the bombers. Before they reach the bombers, Brian and his squadron mates stumble upon a massive formation of 50 German fighters below them. Undeterred by the three to one odds, Don Brian positions his flight behind the enemy. You get into the middle of them and go fast enough so they don't get you and you shoot the bastards down. The war cry of eight Rolls-Royce Merlin engines pierces the sky. You threw everything forward on the thing because you wanted the maximum power. And then usually you would start chopping back on it, slowing up as you approach them. Incredibly, the Mustangs bore in undetected. Brian singles out a 109 shredding the enemy fighter before it even has a chance to react. You could see the coolant flopping out of it. I mean, it was streaming white. Brian pulls up from his attack run. The Mustang strike works. The 109s scatter. That's what we were after, is to break them up. And from then on, until the very last, it was just a mix of airplanes everywhere. And not too dang many 51s. <laughs> Don Bryan latches on to the tail of another 109, expertly balancing his stick and throttle. P-51D, I maintain, it was the most perfect airplane that ever was designed. Everything was exactly where you wanted it to be. You drop your left hand, it goes right to the flaps and to the trim controls. The throttle's just in the right place. The prop control's just perfect. The instruments are set up just right. And it's an airplane you can just sit and touch everything without even looking at it. Brian's finger is poised over the trigger. Suddenly, a frantic voice breaks over the radio. There's a bandit on Brian's six. He reacts with cool efficiency. All you do is just snap the stick into your gut and slam bottom rudder. And if you're at high speed, you just flick like that and you do a spin and it slows you up and then you pick up again. Brian's move ditches the German, but also the rest of his flight. They didn't snap roll with me, so they were, went off. 
But Brian catches sight of a target of opportunity. A flight of eight 109s flying in the direction of the bombers. Brian decides to target tail end Charlie. Brian is behind them, exactly where he wants to be. I'm going to pick the last one, always. Brian knocks the trailing 109 out, then quickly dodges away. Incredibly, another 109 appears off his nose. Brian quickly dispatches the bandit, his second kill in a span of seconds. When these things were so many, so fast, and I would say, okay, that guy is going down. And stop and look for something else. Brian dives back into the furball and latches onto a new target. But his lack of a wingman leaves him exposed. A sudden flash of metal in his rear view mirror. It's a 109 on his six o'clock. Brian breaks to the left. He rolls and reverses, but the German has sunk his teeth into the Mustang and won't let go. And I had the hottest 51 in the air, and this guy was outperforming me. That's what really sweats you off. This Luftwaffe pilot is unlike any other he's encountered. Don Bryan's prowess in the P-51 Mustang is about to be put to the ultimate test. Speed defined the P-51 Mustang and the program under which it was developed. When the British Air Ministry proposed in April 1940 that North American Aviation open a new production line for RAF P-40s, North American instead offered an entirely new airframe and promised it in less time. Just 127 days later, the first Mustang prototype rolled out of the hangar. The fledgling fighter had the same 1,100 horsepower engine that equipped the P-40. But aerodynamically, it was radically different. Unlike a conventional airfoil, the cross-section of the Mustang's wing was thin at the leading edge and thicker toward the middle, with a similar curvature on both top and bottom. This innovative design reduced the buildup of air at the leading edge of the wing, called drag, and ensured laminar flow, the smooth flow of air over the wing contours at high speed. This helped boost the speed of the prototype to 382 miles per hour, faster than the P-40 and even the British Spitfire. Later models of the P-51 were wedded to the 1700 horsepower Rolls-Royce Merlin engine, and the true potential of the Mustang was unleashed. The Rolls-Royce Merlin uh, is just got all kinds, it's got gobs of power to it. And when you kick the spurs into it, it really gets up and goes, especially going downhill. The definitive version of the Mustang, the P-51D, was armed with six 50 caliber machine guns and had a top speed of 437 miles per hour. The P-51 would outperform the normal 109 and the 190 at any altitude. Compared to the ME-109, Germany's most mass-produced fighter, the Mustang has almost every advantage. It is considerably faster, turns slightly better, and has greater range and a higher service ceiling. But now, Don Bryan is struggling to shake an ME-109 that is anything but normal. He can't outclimb the German, and his Mustang is on the verge of stalling. Now, up to that time, the 109s, we call them easy meat. And I'll be darned if this 109 outperformed me. 